Hi everybody, this is Richard Tull from Smith Cooper. Welcome to the video. Today we're going to cover entering a sales order within Sage 200. This is a, a very quick video just really covering the key steps of entering a sales order. We will be publishing more detailed videos uh, to cover all the fields and, and all the elements and aspects of a sales order entry, but at this point in time this is just a quick uh, way of entering a sales order. So let's crack on with the video. So first of all, we will open up our Sage 200, which we have already open. So if we go into sales order processing, into sales orders, and there are three types of uh, methods, but I'll use the full order entry. So we open up the order. The first thing we're asked with is it as a customer or a cash sale account. You may not have that set in the system. That's a setting underneath. So we can search on either um, code, short name, or postcode. I'm going to find everybody beginning with DE uh, as a postcode. So first of all, there's only one account, George Gray Construction, so it's come up straight away. Would I like to override the uh, order going on hold? Yes, I would, because I have the rights. Um, they've got document date, uh, promise dates in here, which will automatically populate into every single line. So it may be that we're promising this to be at the end of the week. If there's a customer order number to be put in there, not mandatory, what we do is we click on this to add items. A screen on the front will now pop up, and this will now give us four options. So standard item, a free text item, an additional charge, or a comment line. So we'll put one of each in very quickly, uh, and then we'll process the order. So we can search by code or by um, description. So I've put a percent in, which means containing. So it's a wildcard search. So I've put wash in there, and it's found washing machine, but also dishwasher. And we can see on there, I can use the up and down arrow as well, we can see how much stock we actually have available uh, of that item. So we'll have some dishwashers, um, go through the fulfillment method, how many would we like, let's say four. The price, I can override it, we'll keep it the same. Uh, the amount, how much discount are you going to give? So let's give £10.70 discount. £10.70 discount, which will then show that our £210 is the finished item price, unit price in there. Uh, once we're happy with that, we click on save. The screen will then fill in the information underneath and take me back to the screen. So I'll put one in there. And let's put hello from Smith Cooper. So for us to say hello, then there's a uh, charge for that. Um, 25 pounds, well worth it. And we can save that as well. So again, onto an additional charge. We've set some up already, so maybe there's a carriage in there. We're gonna charge 10 pounds. We think it's gonna cost us about three pounds 50, and we'll save that as well. And for a comment line, we can choose on, on this. So uh, returns are available if unopened. And we'll be like to show this on any customer facing documents, and also we'll be like the uh, picking list to show this as well. So click on save. So what's happened now is we've saved that, we'll close that screen down, and underneath we've now got four different lines, all of the lines that were on there. We can also choose to resequence these if we want to. Once we're happy with everything, we've got delivery and invoicing tab, so we can choose by default to send it to the delivery address, at the invoice address, or we can override that free type, or if we want to, we can actually build up a library of uh, delivery addresses that we have in there and set one as default if you want to. Anyone who uses analysis codes, they're held down here as well. And if you want to collect payment with order, we can record payment with order or part payment. And also we can use SagePay if you have a SagePay account as well. So once we've done that, we're happy with the details. We can click on save. There's going to come up with a confirmation. So if the order number was actually underneath there, it would have copied it through, but there's another chance there to um, put in an order number and what it's doing is it's confirming to say the total gross amount of this order down there to the customer is £1,050. Are you happy with that? Hopefully yes, that's fine. The system at this point now will generate a uh, order number straight from uh, the system. So if you cancel the order before this point then it won't do anything. And then at this point now it's going to create an order number uh, 5175 and then an acknowledgement if you set it up will be produced and you can carry on dispatching and processing the order in the normal way. Well that's it for this short video. As I say we'll cover uh, the full order processing and a lot more details in further videos so if you haven't already please subscribe uh, and put any comments below. Thanks for your time.